I've always been a man of few words. I don't talk good, I mumble bad, but still my prayers are heard. And they availeth much, so scripture says, as they travel to the throne. Sometimes silence falls and fills the air when I'm all alone. And when I don't know how to pray, I just pray. When life gets hard, the words won't come. I don't know what to say. So I'll just bow my head and raise my hands, Lord, to hallow be thy name. And when I don't know how to pray, I just praise. And my praying time is filled with requests. I offer little, but want so much. Lord, you know what is best. But in the middle of the quiet times, in the storms of life, intercession occurs for me. And so thy kingdom come, thy will be done from here to eternity. When I don't know how to pray, I just pray. Life gets hard, the words won't come. I don't know what to say. So I'll just bow my head and raise my hands. Lord, I hallow be thy name. When I don't know how to pray, I just pray. And I know the sun stood still when Joshua prayed. And my Elijah's prayer, the fire fell down and your greatness was displayed. I don't have those words to pray right now. You know my heart, you know my mind. I trust you to work it out. I know my thoughts ain't yours and your ways ain't mine. I prove that every day. I'll just do my best to praise your name when I don't know how to pray.
I'm looking out across the river where my faith will end inside. There's just a few more days to labor. Then I'll take my heavenly flight Beulah land I'm longing for you And someday On thee I'll stand afternoon. Welcome back with us tonight at Hickox Baptist Church as we uh, go and have the worship uh, service in just a moment. We're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. You'll be turning there. Uh, uh, just got an update a while ago from Mr. Donald Morrison and uh, Lord willing, looks like the doctor's going to release her to come home tomorrow. That's an a answer of prayer. Uh, no doubt about it. She was a very sick lady. Uh, with the coronavirus, but God's touched and healed, and uh, she's on the road to recover. I'm excited to hear a testimony from them. Uh, maybe one day we get back to church and everything's good. Uh, also continue to remember uh, all the ones that still not able to go back to work. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, some has and some haven't, but uh, I know things is getting a little tight for some folks and their families. I continue to remember them in your prayers. Uh, and also... Uh, if there's some families in the community, I failed to mention that this morning, uh, may need some food or something like that, get a hold of the secretaries and uh, we'll get someone around there to uh, go in the pantry and uh, help you with some food or what have you. So uh, if you're tuning in with us and hear that, uh, feel free to call Miss Jackie or uh, Miss Allison. Uh, you can call the church number, the phone will roll over to one of them, whichever one's uh, on call at the time. So if you do that, that'd be great. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, I'm going to read a verse or two and then we'll open up in prayer. It says this in verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his masters and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right there. Father, we thank you tonight, God, that you allow us to be here and we can preach your word again. God, we pray that it'll go out, Lord, and it'll be food for the souls of those that know you. And God, it would be a help, a present help in a time of need for those who don't know you, uh, God, and those that may be hurt. We pray, uh, God, for all the sick, uh, God, for all the ones dealing with the coronavirus and out of work. God, you know each situation. God, use us, our family here at this church, Lord, that we may be a help for someone like that. God, we just thank you for... Uh, Sister Gala's report, we know it was the hand of God and God alone, uh, and we just praise you for it. Be with us tonight as we speak on your behalf, Father. Uh, you would enlighten us from the word that you have for us tonight. We love you and we thank you, and all God's people said, amen. Looking tonight in uh, uh, Second Kings, a man named Naaman. Naaman the leper, that's how we know him. We don't know him too much about uh, his ability being a captain of, of, the, uh, of the army here, but uh, we know more about him uh, being sick and having leprosy. You know, it's a tough thing in those days for lepers, um, especially in a man of his position. They were kind of uh, stay quarantined like we are with the coronavirus and uh, someone uh, like him couldn't be around his folks and uh, had to stay a certain distance and had to uh, even let people know that they were unclean in those days. So leprosy was a foul, foul disease. Uh, and uh, a lot of times it was unto death. 
but uh, he was favored uh, by, his, by his king. Uh, the Bible tells us that he was honorable before his masters and the Lord had dealt with him to deliver Syria into their hands. Uh, so uh, he was a great leader. But the thing is uh, about him, he was a non-believer. Uh, and it, it, it gives, in, uh, not the, I didn't read the whole first verse to you. I want to save this part. And it says this, he was a mighty man of valor. valor, valor. He says, but he was a leper. You know, uh, you could be great in all this life, and you're not immune to the things that happen in this life, uh, whether it be coronavirus or, uh, worst of all, sin. Uh, sin can come in your life, and you're not above it. I don't care how great you might be, uh, you still could be that way. But the Bible tells us here, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out, in verse 2, it says, gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she was waited on Naaman's wife and she said unto her mistress would my would God my Lord were with the prophets talking about uh, Naaman, Naaman's wife uh, had this little slave girl that when they had captured these people, the Israelite people, uh, brought this young girl in there and she was talking to Naaman's wife and she said, I would to God that he was with my folks, uh, that he could be with the prophet. And, he, and uh, it said that uh, in verse 2 there, uh, she waited on Naaman's wife, and then she said unto her mistress, Would my God were with the prophets that is in Syria, for the world would the world, that he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in, and uh, one went in and told his Lord, told um, the king there. He says, Thus and thus saith the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiments. Uh, put that in today's term, it was almost four million. Million dollars uh, in value. Uh, the king of Syria uh, uh, thought that he could buy his way, persuade Israel, although uh, he had the upper hand on them. He was going to send to the king of Israel at that time and, and uh, persuade him with money that he would uh, send uh, this prophet over and that he would heal Naaman. Naaman was uh, uh, thought of very highly that he would go all, all far as uh, to uh, pay that amount of money uh, for a prophet to come in. But God can't be bought. Uh, the, the miracles of God can't be bought. It's, it's through his love and his mercy that we have and our relationship with him that God looks down on us. As we see, the, the, there's two servants in this, in this passage that we're going to talk about. Are the, they're going to be the game changers. It's not the ones in authority. It's not the ones that have a lot. It's the ones that don't have a lot and the ones that are actually servants. You know, uh, it reminds you of what Jesus said when he came. Uh, he came as a servant. He came to do the will of his father that sent him. Uh, so he took on servanthood. These two servants is going to be the game changer in uh, Naaman's life. Not only uh, she, she probably didn't like being a slave there, uh, but she knew uh, that that her her God and her, that her her folks in Israel served that that he could recover from this because uh, God was the miracle making God. So she said that the name is wife, and now the king of uh, Syria was trying to get that done, and he sends a lot of money uh, to the king of Israel. Uh, we'll find out in just a second what happens here. Uh, in verse 6, he says, and he, and he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, He says, Now when this letter is come unto thee, he says, Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. See, it wasn't the king that was God's man. Uh, it wasn't, even though he was the king of Israel, it wasn't God's man. There was a prophet in Israel named Elisha was going to be the man. And uh, we're going to find out that uh, this, this king of Israel gets hysterical. Uh, he, he, he takes it as a bribe or maybe a setup uh, from uh, the king of uh, Syria uh, that he's trying to pull something over him to go at war with him again. And verse 7, we find that out. It says, And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God? 
No, he's not God. There's no man on this earth possess God, uh, you know, uh, in, in that form. We all are Christians. We have access for the throne of, uh, of God and all those things, but we don't possess healing powers. Only God has healing powers, and you cannot buy it. He's trying to buy uh, favors from a king who does not possess the relationship with God that could perform these miracles uh, to do away with the leprosy uh, that Naaman had. Even how much he loved him, even it don't matter, it was about four million dollars that he done, still, that's the way it is with the coronavirus. If you got it, it it's, it's it's the blessings of God. It's no manner of money could buy it. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of all the money that our government has spent uh, trying to keep America uh, functioning as it is right now. I, I believe that if they could find the cure for corona, that they would uh, put all that money together and go buy that, that, that thing. But listen, what they have offered to them is free. The the salvation of Jesus Christ, uh, having him on their side is far better uh, than all these doctors that we have. We know time and time again through the news, these doctors has got it wrong. Uh, you know, they're skilled, uh, they're educated, they got a lot of history. Uh, some of them's done some great things, but we know where the healing's going to come from. It's going to come from God himself. And uh, so even if they try to buy their way into getting something, unless God's involved in it, they won't be no healing. We find out that uh, uh, the hysterical uh, king of Israel, he, he's, he, he's pitching a fit there in his room there. He's got the letter, Naaman's outside, and he says, am I God? No, he's not God. He says, to kill and make alive, that this, ma uh, this man doth sin unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. You know, he, he, he thought the worst. He says, he's just doing this. He knows, I, you know, I guess he figures that he heard this little girl say that and uh, so he's going to send some money down there and if he can't perform it I believe this man knew he didn't have the relationship with God that he should have you know, he didn't bear uh, this ability to uh, heal Laman. He, he, Naaman, he didn't have uh, the ability to do those things, and he knew it. You know, uh, when, when Jesus comes in the clouds, uh, we're going to feel a little bit like this king. We're going to be overwhelmed if we're not prepared to meet him. Uh, he's going to come in the clouds, and we're going to stand before him, and we know, and we're going to recognize his authority and his ability for who he is, and we're going to remember what someone has told us of the Word of God, or we read in the Word of God. Uh, how that day of judgment may be and we're going to go hysterical uh, we're going to have this same feeling because we're going to be helpless because we've never been plugged into the power of God here we see that uh uh, he's all excited about what's going to happen. Verse 8, it says, And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, He said, Wherefore hath thou rent thy clothes? He says, Let him come now unto me, and he will, he will show... He, will, he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. It's amazing. Uh, the king went to one. The king went to king. That was amazing. They didn't go to the man of God. Uh, you know, I think uh, even in the situation that we're in right now, some of the leaders of our countries of all the world, I think they're turning now unto godly people. I think they've. I've seen uh, uh, many times where they're making reference to this pastor and this pastor and maybe this priest and this one. They're seeking help from God in the pandemic situation that we are in, just as they did in the days of Naaman. The Israel king didn't have that power. And when the man of God, Elisha himself, he heard what the king was, was happening to him, that he had rent his clothes. When they would do that in those days, um, it was a, a sign of humility. Some would uh, rent, take their clothes off and lay in sackcloth and ashes and ask for uh, whatever's uh, being put on them to, to pass from them. Uh, we can remember a story uh, when Jonah was on his way to Nineveh and uh, he didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't like the Ninevite people there. And uh, of course you know the story he was swallowed by a well and uh, he was vomited up on land and, and, and in, the heart of, in the heart of hell he called it in the belly of the well there he, uh, uh, he made things right and said he would go into Nineveh. And what he found in Nineveh when word got out as Jonah preached uh, uh, the repentance inside of Nineveh that the whole uh, town come together in Nineveh and they uh, rent their clothes in sackcloth and ashes and God spared them. 
and God spared them. He saw that they were humble. They went before God uh, just as they came on this earth naked with nothing and, and, and smutted themselves up and lay there asking God to forgive them, and they did. Well, uh, this, this king here, he was doing the same thing. He was fearing for his life. He thought there was a war going to come because he knew he didn't have the ability. But thanks, thanks to God's man, a man named Elisha, he heard what was going on and he sent a messenger. He says, you tell him to come see me. You, you just tell him to come over to where I am. No, most of the time, you wouldn't want the opposing side's uh, general of the army to come to your house, but uh, you would, uh, if anything, you would go to him. But Elisha said, tell him to come over to where I'm at. And in verse... Um, Nine, I want you to notice the appearance of uh, uh, Naaman and all his people here. He says, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. I see a man here that's wanting to get delivered from leprosy uh, because this leprosy could kill him. And, uh, you know, he was willing to do anything. He had the support of his own king. He had the support of the king of Israel uh, as much as he could do it. And he sent him to this man. And uh, it, it's kind of ironic. Uh, these folks that are in high authority, got a lot of power or what have you uh, in this world, you got to make a big to-do out of them and in order for that to seem uh, uh, great and mighty in the eyes of men. But let me tell you, God don't have to work that way. We look here as uh, in verse 10 as Elijah uh, sent a message unto him saying he says go wash seven times and thy flesh shall come again unto thee as as thou sh and thou shalt be clean he said just go wash he said go wash down in jordan and thou shalt be clean now this man had come all that way elijah didn't even go out to see him listen it wasn't about elijah it was about god god had uh planned this out so Elijah would do what he did. He didn't have to go stand before the men. You remember in times of, of Jesus when the servant came, uh, this man came and, and one of his servants was sick and one of them came one time and their child was sick and, and uh, it, it, he said just go back, I don't have to be there and he goes back and the fever's gone and the child was living and you know all the scenarios there. Uh, God can be there in the spirit and God can command it from a distance from what he says but this man, he won it's some big to do you know if uh in this life, if, if we don't have the, the bright lights and great crowds to come in, then it's not a great event. But I'll tell you, one of the greatest events ever happens to mankind sometimes happens where there's not but maybe one or two people around. When someone gives their heart to Jesus, that's the most the best miracle in the world that someone could have and the angels in heaven the Bible says are rejoicing there's where the crowd is it's not the crowd down here it, 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 it amazes me and I'm, I, and I'm so glad that it happens uh, we can have baptism here and uh, you know we'll see a lot of strangers come to family members want to watch them to come be baptized and that's a wonderful thing but the great thing is when, when that person got saved that it jarred uh, the prayer bells of heaven and, and joy and happiness happiness was in heaven from one that got uh, a chance to miss hell and accepted that. Naaman here is not going to appreciate that he didn't get all the royal treatment that he come. I mean, he was sent by the king. He was a captain of this army. Uh, he was a mighty man of valor. But you got to remember, he was the one in want. He was the one with leprosy. And he came to uh, God's man, Elisha. And in verse 11 it says, but Naaman was wroth. He got mad. He got mad that he didn't get the attention that he thought he should get. Listen, it don't matter what size, whether it be me or President Trump or whether it be you or President Trump, in God's eyes, you're a soul and you're very precious unto him. It don't matter. One's no bigger. The poorest person in the world is just as important to the richest man that ever walked on the face of the earth in the eyes of God. It is a person created in God's image. He loves them and their pain is just as important to God as the the pain of a wealthy person. Here we see that uh, Naaman was mad and he says, and he went away and said, he says, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. See, there's the problem. 
There's the problem. This man could have probably done been exempted from this thing, done been touched from this thing, but he wanted Naaman's God to, do, I mean, uh, Elijah's God to do something for him. He says, at least he could have come, called on the name of his God. Well, I can tell you, uh, if this leprosy would have left this man, uh, we don't ever find out. Uh, he does turn back and, and uh, he does try to uh, befriend Elisha at the end of this thing after it's all said and done, uh, but we never know or never find out whether or not he changed his life and uh, become a believer in the faith of, uh, of the Israel's uh, God, uh, God Almighty. But he said at least he could have come out and stood and uh, done something. He said he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his Lord and uh, strike his hands over the place and recover the leper. Well, you know that was a no-no in those days, but it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, this leprosy couldn't have affected Elijah. Elijah wouldn't have had a leprosy, but he didn't have to do that. This was something Elisha done by faith. He says, I don't have to go out there. You just go tell him to do this. And uh, he puts the ball back in Naaman's court, so to speak. It's up to Naaman to do the things. It's a test of faith what Naaman would do. But now he's mad and he's leaving because he wouldn't even come out. Oh, he told me to wash in this old dirty water over here in Jordan and notice in verse 12 it says and he, he keeps on with the story he says and not at are not Abna and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel may I not wash in them and be clean so he turned and he went away in a rage let me tell you, it's kind of like the, 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 the dream that Peter had that night when God was sending Peter to go see Cornelius. And he had those dreams and he told Peter to rise and kill and eat. And he says, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean or uh, anything like that. You know, uh, uh, the four-footed beast, I've never done all those things. And, and he told God told him, he says, don't you call what I've sent for you to do common or unclean. And the moral of the story was it was a Gentile man named Cornelius who needed to hear what he needed to do from God's man to be born again. Cornelius was a just man, none like this man named Naaman. Cornelius just needed to know that he needed to accept Christ in his heart by faith and, uh, and accept him. And when he did that, the Bible says he was baptized and his whole house was baptized and got saved. It was because of the proper steps that he went through. And when uh, finally Peter uh, understood what God had called for him to do, this... Uh, Naaman figured out uh, in just a moment here, you're going to find out that he needed to follow the instructions, but Elisha did not go out to him. He says, our waters are cleaner than these waters over here. Uh, let me tell you, if God told you to dip yourself out there in the ditch and you would be healed, that's where you need to go dip. You know, by, the Bible tells us one time when Jesus healed a blind man that he bent over and he took some spit and he made uh, took spittle, the Bible says, and he made a little mud and he rubbed the man's eyes with mud. Now, I, I, you know, that seems a little gross to you, but uh, the spit from the Lord is probably the most cleanest thing you would ever come across in this life uh, to have. And he rubbed his eyes and he went and washed and he could see. Let me tell you, what we might think is uh, uh, not the proper way to do things, God uses things in, in mysterious ways to get his job done and he's doing it here. And in verse 13, and his servant. Now, here's the other servant. The first servant was a little maid servant that kind of turned the king on to go find the, the prophet in Israel that, would, that had the uh, healing power in his voice uh, through God Almighty that he would uh, get this leprosy gone. And now these servants uh, began to speak that had rode with Naaman over to see Elisha. And his servants uh, came near and spake unto him and said, He says, My father, not in other words, he's honoring Naaman. He's, he, he's, he spoke in a way uh, uh, humbly that he, he was upset, so he come humbly. And he said, I, I just want to get your attention a minute. You, you hear what I got? He says, If the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, you know, uh, I think that's why some people don't, don't get saved. They think they got to do some great thing to be saved. Well, it's a great thing to be saved, but it's so simple. It's so simple. Just as simple and, and Naaman's day was to go wash seven times in the River Jordan, to go wash himself, dip himself seven times to, to, for the leprosy to leave. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, at his point, what would it hurt? 
What would it hurt if he would just even in doubt go and do what the man of God had told him to do? What would it hurt in this life if you would humble yourself and ask Christ to come into your heart? You would see an immediate change in, in, in the way you feel and the way you think. And uh, just as Zacchaeus, he had a change in his heart, a wicked tax collector. So is the same thing with this man named Naaman. So this servant tells him, he said, if he'd have told you to do some great thing, he says, wouldn't I have done it? Why, sure he would have done it. You know, done, done, cartwheels, gathered up a big crowd of people, made a big to-do of washing in this river. And, you know, that would have been something. He said, yeah, if, if somebody else could see it. No, it, it was a private thing. Just stop by the river out there, dip seven times, and you'll be whole. But the rest of this verse says, how much rather then, how much rather then when he said unto thee, wash and be clean? Isn't that what you came after? I mean, isn't that what uh, your problem is? He says, you, you thought he, he was got to do some kind of uh, uh, voodoo dance or uh, uh, Indian dance around you or whatever uh, and, and, and cause a big stink about it. He just told you to go down there just that easy. Just that easy. He said, if you'd done a great thing, you'd have done it. He said, why don't you just wash and be clean? You know, I think that's the, the point of the message tonight. All you have to do is ask Jesus to come in your heart. The Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. And not only that, the, the, the leprosy in this case, uh, it represents sin in a lost person's life, and you can be clean. You can be washed in the blood of the Lamb and come out whiter than snow. Verse 14 says that uh, from the little girl that uh, uh, stood up and, and, and mentioned and, uh, uh, Naaman's wife of what God could do to the little fellow that was with Naaman uh, and, and, and referred to him as father, uh, got his attention. He said, you know what? Won't you just give it a try? Won't you just give it a try? And so in verse 14, he says, then he went down. That, that's, that's the first thing. Not, you know, I know he went down. It was a humble thing. He wasn't going to take the voice of uh, uh, of you know, at, at the beginning, that this Elijah guy, he never laid eyes on, told him to go do something like that. But he was going to wade off in this river and do that. But the Bible says, he says, Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. According to the saying of the man of God. Sometimes we got to listen to God and do according to what God tells us to do. The Bible teaches us that there is no other way except by the name of Jesus Christ that you can, uh, a man can be saved and no other way. That's the only way. It's that easy. It's only one person. You don't have to pick. It's one man, the one that died for you. You pick that and you go, and he did that. And he went down to the river. He humbled himself and went in. And the Bible says, and his flesh uh, came again into him like the flesh of a child, and he was clean. Just that easy. Just that easy. Now, I don't know the outcome of Naaman and, you know, the rest of his life. Uh, bits and pieces is all we really know. But I, I can tell you this. Uh, this made a change in his heart uh, uh, from, from what he was. He was mad with uh, Elisha for not coming out and kind of honoring him. When all, all he wanted, uh, Elijah wanted and God wanted, was for him to honor God for what he could do for this man named Naaman. I'm going to read another verse here. Uh, I didn't intend to, but let's go to verse 15. It says, And he returned to the man of God. He and all of his company, and he came and stood before him. And he said, he said, Behold, now I know that there is, there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. What did he say? Don't you know that uh, the king of Syria had probably done brought in all their phys uh, magicians and physicians and astrologers and everything to try to doctor on uh, Naaman and nothing would work? You know, he, he, he's the one that said something about there was no prophet, there was no God in Israel, and now he comes back and report. I see a change in this man. I see that he had a change of heart. He said some things, he manned up, he come back, and he said, he said, there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. He tries to uh, uh, inquire to give uh, uh, Elijah some more gifts and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, it wasn't uh, something that Elijah done that he needed to receive a gift of. It wasn't him. It was a blessing from Almighty God. It just proves the point. And, and Elijah was proving the point, uh, obeying God here. He could not buy this from him. You could imagine what the story would have been when he went back and he told them. He says, oh, listen. 
He said, uh, I paid them $4 million and, uh, and I got clean. If you got $4 million, all you lepers, go down there and see Elijah. You can buy your way. You'll come back looking like me. But God would not see fit for that to happen. Thank God Elijah listened to him, although we find out later that some of his servants didn't uh, and they paid for that. Uh, but it's not nothing that you can buy. Uh, you can't buy salvation. You can't bring the checkbook when Jesus calls you home uh, and write him a check to uh, exempt you from doing all the things that all God's people have done as far as uh, kneeling and confessing their sins before him. You can't write him a check and you get forgiveness that way. You have to do just like everyone else. You have to uh, ask Christ to come into your heart and be born again. I pray through this message, through this illustration in Naaman's life that you're not that person. I, I, I pray that there's not nothing out there that, uh, you know, uh, if you want to do something for the Lord and get the greatest blessing out of it, try to do it with no one knowing that you've done it. That, that's the greatest blessing in the whole world is for you to do something, uh, you know. It, but I'll tell you, uh, there's a few things I've done in, in my life and, and one recently that I've done. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm not going to share what it is. I ain't going to even tell no one what it is. Uh, but I've had the greatest blessing from that because I've, I've kept it to myself. Now, the flesh part of me is wanting me to tell somebody like I had something to do with it when I know I didn't. I, you know, I just asked for a little help and God stepped in and pew, Look what happened. There's change has been made. Uh, things are still changing. Things have gotten better. Yeah, but I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I was to brag or boast on something that I may have done, uh, it could just turn around and go the other way. But I thanks be to God that this man come back and he acknowledged to the man of God. But still, in, in his worldly way, he wanted to give tribute uh, unto Elijah some form of money to prove that he gave something. Listen, Elijah gave it and God gave the healing to him freely. Just as he gives salvation unto lost people and healing unto his people, now it's freely. All he asks for us to do is to love him and to serve him. What cost is that? What are you going to give up in this life? I tell you some things that you, won't, you will give up. Uh, you'll probably lose a few friends uh, that are really not your friends. If, it, if a friend don't love you anymore because you become a Christian, then he truly was not your friend. He te that just tells me he didn't care that you went to hell or not. But I'm telling you, I want to be your friend, but Jesus wants to be uh, more of a friend to you than I could ever be. He died for you. Take this on. Think about this situation. Are you dying in, in, the, in the depths of your sin and, 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 and just getting eat up with the leprosy of sin in your life and you think that maybe uh, at some point that uh, you could rise to the occasion that there will be a cure? You know, I remember uh, the story of Michael Jackson back in the day that he was uh, spent a lot of money trying to figure out uh, 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 some kind of device there where he could go in and be frozen. Before he dies, he was going to uh, go in there and be frozen. And when they found a cure for getting old or cancer or whatever it may be, they had thaw him back out and uh, he could live forever. Well, uh, I, best I remember, he died. You know what? I believe Michael Jackson knew that it once he put himself down, if he'd have frozen himself to death or had somebody too, the only true giver of life is Christ. And uh, he couldn't control that. If, he, if you or I stop our own heartbeat today, listen, we'll face a, a God that is uh, powerful. Uh, we, we'll face a God that loved us and died for us and it wasn't supposed to be that way. We'll face him. Listen, there was no truth to that, what Michael Jackson was going to do. That can't help. Life is given by God and in Him alone. Life, God can take life. It's His to take if He wants to take it. Why not trust in the one that uh, loved you enough to make a way for you? Don't think that in this life... Listen, the Scriptures tell us if only in this life, and only in this life that we have is what some people think heaven on earth. Listen, I don't know about you, but it's nice where I live but it's not heaven on earth because I know the scriptures. It's far from heaven on earth. I have bills to pay down here. I won't have no bill. My bills are already paid when I get to heaven. All the things that I go through. You know, I take medicine. I do this. I, you know, I won't never have to take any of that. So I, I think that going to heaven would be a far better choice than living down here on this earth. If you only had this down here, the Bible tells us all men are most miserable. Most miserable. When is enough is enough? It's like a fellow told me, he says, I'm not greedy. I just want, I don't want to own all the land. I just want to own all the land that joins me. 
And let me tell you, if you owned all this land, you would come to the realization one day, it was not yours. It was not yours. The next fellow that outlived you, it would become his. And God created it. It belongs to him. Where I stand today don't belong to me. It don't belong to this church. It belongs to God. Where you're sitting right now, where you live, that life and that, that house you live in or that vehicle you're in, it don't belong to you. It belongs to God. Everything is created by him. Trust in him. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I pray you do that today. Let's pray together. Father, God, at the close of this message, I pray we could see ourselves maybe thinking, maybe not a leper, but God, if we're sinners without the grace of God, we're in an incurable state other than Christ interceding for us. God, I pray tonight we would see ourselves as that. Do what this man done. Finally, he obeyed. God, he obeyed what Elijah had told him through God. And he dipped himself and he become clean. God, tonight, those under the sound of my voice, that they would surrender their heart to God, put their sins under the blood of Jesus, and ask them to come in. God, they shall rise up and be clean. God, they can be perfect based on, on what Christ done for them on the cross. God, go with us now. We pray for a good week this week. We thank you for what you're doing in, in our community, but people getting... Uh, healed and getting better. God, we know it comes from you. But Lord, let us be what we need to be to our fellow men. Share Christ wherever we may go. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel. And God, give credit where credit is due because all things are credited to you that are good. All perfect gifts come from you. We thank you for it. Go with us now in Jesus' name. Amen.